We learn in private pilot training that temperatures affect the accuracy of our altimeters. When we fly from warm temperatures to cold, the altimeter tends to read higher than our true altitude, that is, how high we really are above sea level. If we're looking to maintain a certain altitude indicated on the altimeter, we'll often descend to compensate for this, which can put us closer to terrain than we're aware. The memory aid taught to pilots is high to low, look out below, meaning flight from high temperatures to low can cause us to be lower than we think we are. This is true of flight between higher and lower temperatures as well as pressures, but whereas we have a way of compensating for different pressure in flight using the altimeter setting, there's typically no way of compensating for changes in temperature. First, why do these errors exist? Remember that altimeters don't directly measure our height above sea level. They measure the pressure of air acting on them, the same way a barometer does. Air pressure is the sum force applied by all the air molecules in the atmosphere above us. So if we're at sea level, our air pressure is the force applied by all the molecules in this column above us, stretching all the way up until the atmosphere thins out. When the air is warm, the molecules in this column spread out and are more diffuse. When the temperature drops, the same column of air with the same quantity of air molecules compresses. The air pressure at sea level may not change a great deal, but the column of air itself is more compact. What this means is that we're at, say, 7,000 feet on a day with international standard temperature. Incidentally, standard temperature at this altitude would be 1 degree Celsius. The altimeter would be measuring the force of all the air molecules above this point. When it's colder, this column compresses, and there are fewer air molecules above us. The altimeter reads this lower pressure as an increase in altitude. So though we haven't climbed, the altimeter now indicates higher. Let's see the mechanics of how this affects us and why. Let's say we're on the ground at an airport at 3,000 feet. Changes in temperature affect pressure at this elevation, but these are corrected out with the reported altimeter setting, which is corrected to sea level for standard conditions. So no matter the temperature, when we set our altimeter to the reported setting, it'll read correctly when we're on the field. The trouble though starts as we climb. The altimeter has a built-in assumption about the lapse rate or drop in temperature for a given gain in altitude. When the temperatures are cold, this lapse rate is much quicker, so that altimeter is more sensitive. Climbing from 3 to 7,000 feet at cold temperatures like this will cause the more sensitive altimeter to read higher. The difference gets larger the higher above the airport we climb. This is trouble for keeping us separated from terrain, as we mentioned, but it becomes really problematic on an instrument approach when this discrepancy gets too large. Here's the Arnav Yankee approach into runway 12 at Missoula, Montana. In the notes section, there's a snowflake symbol with a temperature limit of negative 12 degrees Celsius. What this means is that Missoula is known as a cold temperature airport. AIM 7-3-4 illustrates what to do at airports such as these when on an instrument approach. The FAA has a list of all airports which are affected by cold temperature operations, based on certain safety criteria and published here, along with the segments along the approaches which are affected. Here's what that list looks like. In our airport, Missoula makes this list when the temperature is at or below negative 12 Celsius. Both the intermediate and final approach segments are affected. Looking at the approach plate for the Arnav Yankee, we can identify both the intermediate segment between Odiri and Supi, and the final segment between Supi and the missed approach point. For any of the affected segments, we'll need to correct the minimum altitudes. The AIM also details how to make these corrections. The AIM provides us a table for correcting published altitudes, which we'll look at in a bit. We'll be taking the difference between the field elevation and minimum altitudes at certain points along the approach, and applying an altitude correction based on the temperature. For the intermediate segment, we'll take the height above the field at the final approach fix and apply the correction to all fixes on the segment. For the final segment, we'll do the same thing, only we'll use the height above the airport at the MDA or DA and apply it to all fixes along the segment. Let's see this at work. Here's the altitude correction table referenced in the AIM. For the intermediate segment, we'll take the minimum altitude at the final approach fix, SUPI, which is 6,200 feet. The field elevation of the airport is 3,206 feet. The difference is almost exactly 3,000. So we'll find 3,000 across the top and the reported temperature, let's say it's negative 12 degrees, along the side. We'll use the row for negative 10. Where these intersect will be our altitude correction. 
it's 290 feet. Let's round this to 300 since it's a few degrees colder than the negative 10 on the row. Let's now apply that 300 foot correction to the fixes on the intermediate segment. So this would be 6,500 feet at Suppy, 7,300 feet at Callip, and 9,700 feet at Odeer. Next, we'll look at the corrections for the final segment. We need to use the MDA or DA for the approach to calculate the altitude correction for this segment. There are a few choices for minimums on this. Let's use the LNAV MDA minimum of 4520 feet. The difference between our MDA and field elevation is about 1300 feet. We'll use the column for 1500 feet just to be conservative. And again, we'll use the negative 10 row. This gives us a correction of 150 feet, which we'll apply to the MDA, making it 4670, as well as to the step down fix at beg pay, which is 4990. So this is how we correct individual segments for the approach. Of course, we can correct higher than this if we're unsure, but we'll need to advise ATC of whatever cold temperature adjustments we're making and stick to those as we would any altitude restriction. If we're able to automatically calculate these corrections, it can make our job easier. The G1000 will do this for us. Here, we're at 11,000 feet inbound to the initial approach fix at Missoula, Odire. We've already activated the RNAV Yankee to runway 12, the same approach we've been examining, and have the LNAV MDA 4520 bugged as our minimum. To apply the cold weather correction, we move over to the flight plan page on the MFD. Notice the altitude minimums already populated next to each fix on the flight plan. We'll want to hit the menu hard key on the bezel and use the outer FMS knob to scroll to temperature compensation. Hit enter. Now all we have to do is turn the FMS knob to set the reported temperature on the field of negative 12. And notice the calculation being done off the final approach fix. We'll hit enter twice to apply the corrections. Now the altitude minimums on the flight plan have changed, and there's a snowflake icon next to each one indicating that's been corrected. You may also be able to notice that the top of descent point has been calculated further away from our current position since the descent to that higher corrected altitude won't be as much. Crucially though, no correction has been made to the MDA. We'll need to calculate that manually still. We can do that the same way we would do it if we needed to reload the approach. Hit proc, scroll to select approach, hit enter and enter again to choose this approach, enter to stay with this transition, we'll decline the course reversal, and now we can update the barrel minimum to our calculated correction. And hit enter twice. We're all set. If we're using vertical navigation, it'll adhere to those corrected altitudes too. Cold temperature operations aren't common at most airports, especially if we don't operate in more northern climates. But extreme cold temperatures can cause us to fly lower than we're aware, so always adhere to a conservatively higher altitude and keep ATC in the loop when flying these approaches. IFR Ground School is in session now. This video is a great sample of the types of training you'll receive in the full course, integrating animation and graphic design, simulator and other technology, and focused direct instruction. Dash on over to the website, flight-insight.com for more.